Elon Musk has been on a bit of a Twitter nerd roll recently talking about compilers, coding, and neural networks. Let's take a look at the tweets and see if we can ferret out what's going on here. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I've done a bunch of videos. In fact, I've got an entire playlist called Explaining Andre that I'll put up here if you want. Uh, Andre Carpathy has done several talks and you know he gets into really, really deep into the weeds about uh, neural networks and machine learning, et cetera, right? Obviously, so that's pretty important stuff. But recently, Elon Musk has been doing his own thing on Twitter and I thought it was worth trying to explain a few of the tweets that he's had within the last few days. I don't know if he's gonna keep this up. If he does, maybe I'll start a playlist called Explaining explaining Elon, so it'd be a nice sort of counterbalance to explaining Andre. But anyway, in the meantime, let's take a look at these tweets. All right, so first starting out on February 21st, which was a few days ago, we have K10 here said, FSD beta is a game changer. It's an industry changer. And I would argue that not few understand this, but those in the industry know this and they are scared. So I think he means few understand this, not few, not few. Anyway, I don't know. I think that's what that means specifically. Twitter's lovely because you can't edit things later on. Anyway, continuing on, they don't want to admit their designs and plans are flawed. They want to slow down Tesla with a concerted effort. So this, of course, is referring to a whole bunch of stuff that's been going on recently. There's been a bunch of rumors talking about how NHTSA is investigating Tesla for the full self-driving. There's talk about how full self-driving might be disallowed in the United States. There's a bunch of potentially bad things. And of course, it's very important that Tesla continues to gain the information and has as many people driving. They have about 60,000 full self-driving beta testers on the road right now. And of course, those 60,000 drivers produce priceless information and data for Tesla. So it's really important. Anyway, I believe that K10 was talking about the CNBC video that I also did a video on. So you can check that out up here if you're interested. But anyway, that video was kind of a hit piece against Tesla. And it made it sound like this full self-driving beta was incredibly dangerous when the data actually shows just the opposite. So anyway, I think this is what started the whole thing off. But the important part here is that Elon Musk responding to it said, a general solution to self-driving, essentially real world AI, requires writing extremely difficult software in the arenas of training, inference, control, analytical tools, data management, hardware optimization, and simulation, one of the hardest technology problems that exists. So what does this all mean? Let's start at the bottom, one of the hardest technology problems that exists. I think we can actually run with that. Let's just take flying to the moon as a counterexample, right? That's considered to be one of the hardest things that humanity has ever done. We did that well over 50 years ago. In fact, the last moon landings were 50 years ago this year. So we've got, we've got a half a century since we landed human beings on the moon still haven't solved full self-driving. So when you saw the Jetsons in the 1960s, the cartoons with the Jetsons and he's flying around and all of that stuff, and he had like an AI robot that would do things for him, the flying around, going to the moon, all of that kind of stuff happened, obviously not like the Jetsons, but Rosie the robot and all of those kinds of things have not happened yet. So that indicates the, the complexity, right? The level of difficulty between getting to the moon and solving general AI. Now, why does Elon Musk say that this solves a big part of general AI? And of course he said this in other tweets as well as this one, but basically what it is is you've got to solve a whole bunch of problems in order to get a car to drive itself safely under all conditions or nearly all conditions. It's an incredibly hard problem. So he kind of goes through this, right? Training, inference, control, analytical tools, data management, hardware optimization, and simulation. So training, of course, people talk about neural network training all the time. Obviously, that's a big thing. That goes along with data management because you have to have data to train something. So those are two huge issues. These are not small things. You have to not only collect data, but you have to figure out how to auto label the data or have it train on its own without needing to have labeling and stuff. So it's really, really complicated to do all of that stuff. 
Inference is the actual deployment model. So that means that as opposed to the training, that's the thing that's actually going out, making the inferences and actually driving the car, etc. Control, I would say, is a relatively small piece of this pie, mostly not because it's not hard, but because it's already been solved. So that's the thing that actually steers the car and all of that stuff. Now, of course, when we get to the Tesla bot, that's a whole different matter because control over a bipedal robot like a human being is going to be much more difficult. Going along with the inference is hardware optimization. And what that means in this circumstance is you have to optimize the models and the hardware to run together, to work together under really, really constrained situations, right? You're in a car. It's essentially you're running a laptop in the car. Can't use too much power. Can't overheat too much. Has to run super fast. Has to run e real time. So all of this stuff, inference has to have really, really optimized hardware as well as really, really optimized and really good software. And the final piece of this is simulation. I did a video on AI day simulation up here. It's very interesting that they are actually working on photorealistic simulations right now. So what that means is a simulation that's so good that the training engine can't tell the difference between this and real world data. And that is a really golden opportunity because one of the things you can do with simulation is number one, you can create almost an infinite number of variations on a theme if you're interested in training on that. But also you know exactly where everything is. That's one of the hardest things about labeling real world data, right? You've got a car, but a human being sees a car, but a computer just sees a bunch of pixels. So it has to go through a lot of steps to figure out where a car is, put it in object space, make, you know, make it a vector, put it in vector object space, et cetera, et cetera. And done videos on that as well, so you should just watch all of these videos if you don't understand. But basically, if you're simulating, you already start off knowing where the car is in space, in the simulated space. So that is a huge advantage. Anyway, if they can get that to work, that super, super helps with feeding extra data in, especially for bizarre kind of corner and edge cases that exist. All right, continuing on, the next day, Elon Musk talks about this some more. He said, while it is tempting to focus on one of these arenas as the hard one, in fact, they are all difficult and important. Tight C and custom compiler too. An inference computer optimized for energy efficiency, reliability, and long life is also critical. Can't just jam GPUs in the trunk. <laughs> like I said, you can't just throw energy at the whole thing and make it work. And by the way, I responded to this, not that Elon Musk cares, but I said, refactoring for energy efficiency and model size during edge computing is critical. Out of curiosity, has anyone on your team looked into neuromorphic chips? They might not be ready for prime time yet, but they sure seem promising. And I did a video on that as well, if you're interested. But anyway, what Elon's saying in this tweet here is that he's saying there's all of these factors, right? There are all the things that I listed off from his tweet. And he was saying that people could say like, oh, this is the hardest one, or this is the hardest one, or this is the hardest one. He's saying that basically they're all really, really hard and they're really difficult. So that makes it extremely challenging to do it. You don't have a crux problem. You don't have like six relatively difficult problems, but not that difficult. And one super hard problem, you have like six or seven really, really hard problems simultaneously. And then he talks about tight C and custom compiling too. So he's also done tweets about the C compiler. They're actually building or have built a C compiler that's optimized or customized just for the hardware three engine, which is pretty remarkable. It's not a trivial task to design a compiler. It is pretty challenging to do that. And in general, people just sort of use generic compilers that are okay for everything. And what the compiler does is it takes a high level language like C, I would see it's kind of like a mid high level language, but anyway, it takes a high level language like that, that humans can read and it squishes it down or converts it into machine readable code. And you can do that in a fairly generic manner and it works just fine. You know, you might get like a 10 or 15% efficiency loss and speed loss because you're not doing it optimized for those specific chips. But in the case of full self-driving, where you're trying to squeeze out every single possible top and every single possible frame as you're doing this stuff, it's super important that this is optimized. So they've built a compiler specifically for hardware three. I imagine they've probably also built one for hardware four if it's significantly different architecturally, but they're not gonna talk to us about that just yet. Anyway, then he goes on to talk about an inference computer optimized for energy efficiency which was what my tweet was relating to, you have to refactor neural network models because not only energy efficiency, but just size. These things have limited amount of memory, whereas the training computers have massive amounts of memory. So you have to refactor the neural network to make it smaller, but also to run in a very energy efficient manner. 
And again, along with that is reliability and long life. So, right, you can't have this thing crashing all the time. So it's not only got to work reliably, it's got to work reliably for a long period of time without crashing. And it's got to have some sort of graceful failure mode if things start to go wrong. And, you know, Elon said you can't just jam GPUs in the trunk. So if you go back to like the 1990s and stuff like that, or even the early 2000s when they were do doing these DARPA challenges and everything, what they would do is just take massive amounts of compute power and stick it in the trunk of the car, put sensors all over the thing and drive it around. So very, very cool, but that's not a scalable solution for all of us consumers. That's something that only kind of science can do as a way of exploring things. It's not something that consumers can go out and buy because it's too expensive, too fragile, too easy to break, takes too much knowledge to run and operate and all of that kind of stuff. And then continuing on, on the same day, Elon Musk tweeted, I'm a fan of Rust, which by the way is a programming language. I didn't know that much about it. Apparently it has won like awards and people really, really love it. Apparently it's syntactically very similar to C++, but it does mem memory management on its own. You don't have to do it. That's a huge bugaboo with C++ and especially with C. Oh my gosh, <laughs> memory management and little memory leaks and things like that are a nightmare when it comes to C. So anyway, apparently Rust is sort of a modern take on C++ using the same sort of syntax, but with memory management and stuff like that all under the hood, it takes care of that. So anyway, very cool. I don't know that program that well. I kind of am interested in learning about it, but right now with everything else, I'm not sure I'll ever have a chance. But anyway, <laughs> it'd be cool to take a look at it. Anyway, he says it clearly scales well, given that Discord uses it. And by the way, if you're not a Patreon member, why are you not a Patreon member? Because then you get access to my Discord channel. So it's like, wow, Elon was plugging my Patreon and my Discord channel. So there you go. If Elon says it, you should do it. Anyway, he says for max performance, however, nothing beats tight C with a customized compiler on specialized hardware. Important for max frame rate on vehicle inference computer. Otherwise, we mostly use C++ and Python. So again, C++ and Python are coding languages, no big deal. They're very standard. Everybody knows them at this point. So they use that for the training aspects and everything. And as they use PyTorch as the basis of their neural network work, it makes a whole lot of sense that they would use Python for their main, one of their main coding languages. Anyway, the, the central paragraph there, tight C, so really, really good C writing. And this is just crazy stuff down at the bottom. You can see, you know, an old guy weaned on C. I actually learned C a long time ago, someplace back there on my bookshelf, I've got Kernigan and Richie's little teeny weeny book on, on C that I actually learned C with, with all their examples and everything. It's all kind of falling apart now, it's so old. But anyway, beautiful language but it's a kind of procedural language. It's very primitive. It's very low level compared to most of the other languages these days. So it takes a lot of skill to write good C code. But anyway, if you do good C code, it's way faster than anything else because really C++ is built on C and a lot of other programs are built on C. So, so C is kind of a basis for all of this stuff. Also Unix and the Mac OS, all of that stuff ultimately is written on C down underneath it. So it's a very, very powerful language, but it's also a, it's a tough <laughs> it's a tough thing to deal with it's not like modern languages that are much more forgiving so anyway it's really cool that people are still able to code and see this well like kudos to those folks but he was saying again customized compiler so they built their own compiler for hardware 3 specialized hardware hardware 3 is important for max frame rate which is super super important in the inference engine that's in your car because your car has to be able to run at the maximum frame rate in order to be as safe as possible. So that's what he's getting at with this particular tweet. And then finally, just today, Elon Musk sort of tangentially referred to the same conversation. He said, LiDAR is a seductive local maximum. SpaceX designed and built them to dock with the ISS. However, the road system was designed to work with biological neural networks and eyes. So a general solution to self-driving necessarily will require silicon neural networks and cameras, real world AI. So again, he's repeating that idea, real world AI, generalized AI, AGI, which is artificial general intelligence, is kind of associated with all of this stuff. I'm a firm believer that AGI will only really come into its own in embodied instances, which means that you need robots like cars or, or humanoid robots or something like that. I don't believe that AGI will ever come about in a computer that's more or less cut off from the external world. I just, I think that's part of why we're conscious. I think it's because we're interacting with the world is why we're conscious. So that's just my opinion, total speculation on my part. But anyway, real world AI, super, super important, really, really difficult stuff. You can see that Elon says that LiDAR was really, really good for SpaceX when they were building their docking system with the ISS. 
ISS. So they're using LiDAR. They're bouncing this stuff off of the ISS as they're bringing the crew dragon or, or cargo dragon in to dock with the ISS auto autonomously. In a situation like that, it makes a lot of sense. You're only building a very few of these capsules. Doesn't really matter how expensive this LiDAR system is because everything else is millions and millions of dollars. So who cares how expensive it is? It can also be really fragile. It can only work one or two you know, trips up to the space station and back and you have to replace it, no big deal if that's the case. None of this stuff works for a car. Cars have to be simple, they have to be robust, they have to work with what's around them all over the place, and they have to not require anything special on the roads beyond what human beings have, which is eyes and ears and a brain. So that's what he's saying here, right? The road system was designed to work with brains and with eyes and with ears, I would say. So a solution to driving as opposed to flying in space, space wasn't designed with human beings in mind, the road system was. So space is a whole different thing, much more complex also because it's three-dimensional space, orbital mechanics, really, really complicated stuff, and you're only building a few very expensive things. So completely different use case from cars. But cars were built for people, for us, with our eyes and with our brains. And it's really important, according to Elon, and I agree with this, that we don't have to use a bunch of extra sensors to make this work. And of course, of all the self-driving systems out there, Tesla is the closest to actually solving it. And they're doing it only with vision and some ultrasonic stuff for close in things. But basically they're doing it only with vision and them being that close to solving the problem indicates to me that they're probably on the right track. All right, so that's a whole bunch of really nerdy tweets from Elon Musk. I really love that he's willing to just put this stuff on Twitter. It's really cool that in 240 characters or so, he's able to make these dense, nerdy arguments and just kind of lay out really interesting cases and make very, very reasonable points when you break down exactly what he's saying. Anyway, I hope that this episode was informative for you. If you do understand this stuff already, it's probably no big deal. But if you kind of read this and you were like, ah, this is all Greek to me, right? <laughs> if you didn't understand this, I hope that does help to explain what's going on in Elon's mind here. And I hope that it's helpful as you read these tweets and kind of try to think about what's happening at Tesla, what's happening at SpaceX as well, and of course, what's going on in Elon's brain. Sure seems like he thinks of a lot of cool, nerdy stuff. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. And again, remember that you get Discord access if you join at the kilowatt level or above. Anyway, to all of you, thank you all so much for your help and your support and for the discussions. I really do enjoy them. And of course, if you want to join the team, definitely check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200 and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.